Bye. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for life. Thank you for our family and friends. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for giving us this year for us. So we can praise you. Okay. I pray that all will be well. I, I pray that we will learn about Jesus. In Jesus' name, I
Jesus and I on a pilgrim journey, heaven is my home. Jesus and I on a pilgrim journey, heaven is my home. Heaven, heaven, heaven.
boys and girls, and happy Sabbath to you. Welcome to another exciting kindergarten lesson. Today we are going to talk about hiding. How many of you have ever enjoyed playing the game hide and seek? When I was your age, I remember loving hide and seek, looking for the best place to hide. Probably I can hide behind a piano, we can hide behind a chair until our friend caught up with us. But boys and girls, sometimes we have to hide when we are doing something naughty. In today's story, we are going to find out about our two friends that we met in the first lesson who were hiding. And we're going to find out why they were hiding and why God was looking for them. Hello boys and girls, this is Aunt Frenita and I have a story for you called Hiding from God. Today's memory verse is from Psalms 100 verse 5. It says, The Lord is good and His love endures forever. The message for today's story is God loves us all the time, even when we do wrong. Have you ever done something so naughty that you were ashamed? A long time ago, Adam and Eve did just that. Adam and Eve really liked the Garden of Eden home that God had created for them. Every day they learned something new. One day, Eve found herself in the middle of the garden beside a beautiful tree. She knew that was the only tree in the garden whose fruit God said that they were not to eat. Suddenly she heard a voice. Did God really say you cannot eat of any tree in the garden? Who was that? Eve looked up. There in the tree branches, she saw a beautiful serpent and it was talking to her. We can eat the fruit of the trees in the garden, Eve answered, but not the fruit of this tree or we will die, she added. You will not die said the serpent, who was really Satan. God is just trying to keep something special away from you. Go ahead, try it. It is really quite good. Eve looked at the fruit. It did look good. So she decided to believe the serpent. She knew better, but she took some fruit and ate it anyway. Then she picked some more and gave some to Adam. Adam also decided to disobey God. He quickly took the fruit and ate it. Suddenly, Adam and Eve were so ashamed that they wanted to cover themselves and hide. When they disobeyed God, they lost their robes of light. So they sewed together some fig leaves and covered themselves. Later that day, God came to walk with them. But when they heard God calling, Adam and Eve hid from him. Adam, called God, where are you? Eve, Adam, where are you? Finally, Adam answered, I, I, I heard you calling and I was afraid, so I hid. God knew what had happened. Did you eat from the fruit of the tree I told you not to eat from? First Adam blamed Eve, it's her fault. And then Eve blamed the serpent, it's the serpent's fault. God was very, very sad. He told Adam and Eve that they would have to leave their beautiful garden home because they had disobeyed. But God still loved them. He used animal skins to make clothes for them. And he promised that someday his own son would die to rescue them from their sins. God truly loved Adam and Eve, and he loves you and me too. Even when we do something wrong, he still loves us. God is always ready to forgive us if we are really, truly sorry for what we have done. Boys and girls, God truly loved Adam and Eve even though they did something bad, even though 
he had to put them out of their beautiful garden home. God loves you. Even though when we do bad things, it makes him sad, but he will always love us. All we have to do is to keep obeying him and he will always be on our side. He will always be there for us. Have a happy Sabbath. See you next week. Hello everyone, it's Aunt Fernita, and we're studying Lesson 4, A Picture of God. The message is God's commandments help us understand Him. The memory verse for this week is from Psalm 119, verse 165. Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Mika jumped up and down with excitement as she looked at the letter from her grandma. In the letter was a picture of grandma in her new garden. It helped Mika see exactly how grandma looked now, and it reminded her of the fun things that they had done. Letters, photos, phone calls, and video chats help you remember what that person is like. In today's lesson, God gave the Israelites some words that helped them know what He is like. This was the day. God had told the Israelites to get ready. He was coming to Mount Sinai to talk with them. For two days they had been getting ready, washing their clothes, and above all, staying away from the mountain. God had forbidden them to touch it. Thunder and lightning and a thick, dark cloud hung over the mountain. Suddenly, a loud trumpet blasted. Doo -doo -doo -doo. The people trembled. Moses led the people to the foot of the mountain. Smoke covered the mountain and the earth shook. The sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Then God spoke. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. First, God reminded the Israelites who He was. He loved them. He wanted them to know and love Him too. He knew what they needed to be happy. So He came to Mount Sinai to give them the Ten Commandments. God spoke, You shall have no other gods before me. God wanted them to respect His power to make Him the most important thing in their lives. Then God said, You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For a long time the Israelites had been in Egypt where people worshipped many idols. They had forgotten how to worship God. God spoke again, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who misuses his name. When we love someone, we are careful to respect their name. For the fourth commandment, God said, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. God gave us the Sabbath as a special time to rest and to get to know Him better. He also wants us to remember the wonderful way He created us and cares for us. When God gave the fifth commandment, He said, Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. God gave us parents to love us, to care for us, and to help us learn right from wrong. In return, God wants us to respect them and to obey them. God knew that living in loving families is best for us. The next four commandments were short, telling the Israelites how they were to act toward other people. You shall not murder. God alone can give life, and He wants us to respect and protect it. You shall not commit adultery. God wants happy families. He wants parents to be married to each other and to love each other in a special way they don't share with anyone else. 
you shall not steal. God wants us to respect the things that belong to others. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. God's words are true, and He wants our words to be true as well. The last commandment told the Israelites how they should feel when other people have nice things that they don't have. You should not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. God wants us to focus on Him, not on other people or what they have. God gave these commandments to the Israelites to help them understand Him and what is important to Him. And God knew the Israelites would be happier if they followed His rules. God's rules still tell us what is important to Him. The Ten Commandments still help us understand what God is like. They still give us a picture of God who loves us and wants the best for us. Good day, juniors. Happy Sabbath. My name is Uncle Shemaya, and our lesson today is Clear Headed or Be Headed. The power text today is Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, let your bodies be as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is a true and proper worship. And our PowerPoint is, we worship God when we offer Him our bodies and our minds. Have you ever tried to talk to someone on the phone, but, was in, but had been interrupted by bad connection? It's disappointing. Well, this is the same disappointment or feels when we, are, when we allow our minds to be clouded by substances, harmful substances that can interfere, no, that interferes with the connection. Day after day, John the Baptist waited in his gloomy dungeon cell. John sought a lot of his days besides the Jordan. He remembered going for walks in the early morning and long hours of quiet, talking with God. He remembered preaching to hundreds of people who later lined up for baptism. He also remembered the many priests and leaders who mumbled and argued and wished he would just go away. One of the reluctant listeners had been Herod Antipas himself, the ruler of the local area. John recalled noticing him on the edge of the crowd, listening, Repent and be baptized. John had preached, Repent of your selfish ways, your lying, your pride, your adultery. Don't be like Herod, taking his own brother's wife for himself. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. John has watched Herod out of the corner of his eye. The king of had obviously been listening and trembling. When the others left, Herod waited and talked with John. From that time on, the two have spoken many times. At home, Herod began to act different. Herodias, the wife he had taken from his brother, was not pleased with his changes. You have to quit talking to that prophet, she had demanded. But Herod had sighed. What if he's right? What if he should return to your husband? Quit talking like that, Herodias had snapped. Be a man and arrest the fellow for insulting us. Throw him into the dungeon. Throw him into the dungeon. And if you don't, I won't speak to you. Herod did as he was told, not by John, but by Herodias, the wife of his brother. Days had passed. Herod believed John was a prophet, but he couldn't bring himself to release him, and he couldn't bring himself to kill the man either, as Herodias wanted. Herodias continued to plot to get rid of the prophet she thought was trying to ruin her life. Finally, her chance arrived. A large party was thrown for Herod's birthday. Tables were loaded with rich food and intoxicating drinks. Around the table sat people Herod wanted to impress and people who wanted to impress him. Herodias encouraged him to eat and drink and forget his problems. Here, she suggested soothingly, have another drink and relax. 
I have a surprise for you. Herod's conscience shut down for the night as the, as the musician galloped off to the right as the beat of the music throbbed and filled the room. A young woman began to weave her body as she danced closer and closer to the king. Salome, Herodias and Philip's daughter, was a surprise entertainment. She held the complete attention of Herod and his guests. Herod felt the same way he had when he first saw Herodias. He wasn't thinking logically. He wasn't thinking at all. When the dancing stopped, Herod called for Salome. He went to impress her to appear powerful and generous. But his word came out a little slow. Delightful, delightful, your dance was delightful. Whatever you want, tell me anything you want. He grinned foolishly. Some of the guests who could still think looked at the girl a little surprised. How would she respond to this unreasonable generosity? Would she accept it as just that? Or would she take advantage of this drunken stepfather who was not thinking straight? Salome ran to her mother for instructions. Herodias whispered in her ear. The girl returned to Herod, who was still muttering, up to half my kingdom. The room quieted as Salome stood fiercely before Herod. Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The girl stood without a smile. Herodias, Herod began to laugh. Salome was drunk too and making a joke, he decided. There's nothing to laugh about that. Fire flashed in her eyes. I want his head on a platter on a platter now. Herod looked beyond her at his important guest, who waited for his reaction. He looked at Herodias, then back at Salome's fiery eyes. The drunken king had no power left to decide for, for right. He raised his head, he raised his hand for a servant to take a message to the prison. Before the night was over, Salome and Herodias would have a bloody head on a platter, and Herod would have given up his last bit of conscience. Young girls and young boys, today as a born in life, remember, be careful what you put into your mind. Be careful what you put into your body. Harmful and intoxicating substances like the wine Herod, can, Herod drank can impair your judgment and cause you to make decisions that you know are wrong. But under that condition, you wouldn't think so. So be careful. Herod gave up his conscience at night in a drunken fit to impress a girl. And as a result, to, to, to save his pride in front of his guests. Be careful with so as you go on the children this week. Remember, be careful what they put in your mind. Be careful what they put in your body, I meant to say. As you can disrupt the connection in God. And you can make the same way of Herod, the same mistake that Herod made. Beheading an innocent man for, the, for doing nothing. That is lesson today. Children, thank you and have a happy Sabbath. My name is Kisa Regis, and for this week's mission story, we are going to be traveling, heading to Thailand. When KK was eight, she learned that her mother was ill with cancer. The little girl didn't know what to do. As mother suffered, she longed to help. She spoke with teacher Lin at the Seven Day Adventist School where she studied with Thailand. Teacher Lin gave KK a big sympathetic hug. Pray and trust in God, she said softly. KK came from a family that was, that was not Christian and she had never prayed. Teacher Lin taught KK how to pray. You talk to God in the same way that you talk to your father or to your mother or to a friend, she said. She suggested that KK repeat a prayer after her. There God, she said, 
their God, Keke repeated, thank you for giving me a wonderful and loving mother. Now mother is sick, please help her, she said. Now mother is sick, please help her, Keke repeated. Amen, amen. Teacher Lynn also showed Keke how to read the Bible. Keke prayed with Teacher Lynn every day for four months. Whenever she felt sad and wanted to pray, the two knelt down and prayed. Sometimes Keke's whole class prayed for her mother and her. Mother heard that Keke and people at school were praying for her. She didn't say anything, but Keke could see that she was happy that everyone at school loved her. The children did more than pray. They made greeting cards out of colorful paper and gave them to Keke and her mother. Keke's favorite card read, Cheer up! Mother grew weaker, but Keke, re Keke refused to doubt in God. She knew that God had a special plan for her mother and her. If it is God's plan for a mother to go away and for me to live without her, I have to trust and believe in him, she told her classmates. Then mother died. KK cried. She did not understand why God had allowed her mother to die, but she trusted in him. Today, KK prays when she wakes up and before she goes to bed. She prays during the day at school. She prays without ceasing. As the Bible teaches in 1 Thessalonians 5 through 17, God really knows what's best for me and he knows what will happen in my future. KK says, I trust him. Thank you for your 13th Sabbath offering three years ago that helped KK School Adventist International Mission School in Korak, Thailand to construct a new campus so it could expand into a high school. The new school buildings were constructed just in time for KK to stay for high school. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye! Hello boys and girls and welcome to this week's extra special craft session. Today, our activity would give us an opportunity to make something exciting and delicious in the kitchen. Do you like to work in the kitchen? Well, if you do, you will definitely love this week's craft activity. Make sure to work with an adult while creating these beautiful, joyful cookies. To make these cookies, we would need one cup of flour, which is the word of God, one half teaspoon of baking powder, which is light heartedness, five tablespoons of sugar, which is a given and a sharing spirit, one half of a cup of butter, which is the oil of the Holy Spirit, and one egg, which binds us together with cords of love one teaspoon also of vanilla essence which are our faith experiences that flavor our christian walk so let's begin first we'll add our butter and our sugar to our mixing bowl then we we'll combine these two together using our mixing apparatus is coming together nicely. Okay, all done. You see it's looking nice and fluffy. Next, we would add our egg 
to this mix of ingredients. mix looks like this we'll add our vanilla essence and blend it together finally we'll our add dry ingredients which would include the flour and baking powder for our joyful cookies now we'd scoop these onto our lined or greased bacon tray see how easy we can just scoop them off of this, a small spoon onto the tray. Quick and easy guys. And I promise they are also very delicious. We can use these cookies to share with friends and family who we haven't seen in a long time or just to show that we love them and we're thinking about them because we know this is a season for sharing with others and it's exactly what Jesus wants us to do. First step would be just to put our cookies into a preheated oven and we heat it at 350 and leave it for 10 minutes. See how quick? 10 minutes and we would have some beautiful, joyful cookies to enjoy with friends and family and to share with others. Hi, Kezia Crooks here. Let's see. I want to thank God for so many things. And 2021 was a very long and trying year. It started when I applied to join the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard. I ended up getting through with the Trinidad and Tobago Air Guard. I didn't know much about the Air Guard, so it was something I needed to accept and I decided to say God must have a reason for what he was doing. The training period was supposed to be three months. It ended up being five and during this training it was very difficult. It tried me physically, mentally and spiritually but I promised God that once I made it through, once he got me through, I will let everyone know it was only him through everything was possible. And I made it through the training successfully. I completed it as the best female recruit and the fittest female recruit. And I am so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for this new stage I'm at in my life and in 2022 I just 
hope and look forward for greater things and bigger things growing spiritually emotionally growing closer with my friends and family because life is short and we just have to remember to cherish the small things in life and remember god in everything that we do bye enjoy the rest of your day in 2021 i would like to thank god for his love and the gift of life it is often overlooked and underappreciated how much God must love us to allow us to wake up every day, since many people don't get this privilege, especially in the recent times that we live in. Sometimes just taking a second to give God thanks could be the best way to start off the day, and it only takes a few minutes. In 2022, I'm looking forward to seeing a new year and hopefully an improvement in the state of the pandemic situation. I would hope for the mortality rate and the number of cases to decrease and for people to stay strong and trust in God. Stay safe. Good day everyone, my name is Adbil Mark. I'm a 24 year old, young adult. Um, I am quite thankful for the Lord for allowing me to live for this long. Especially in COVID times, I'm very thankful that I'm able to wake up every day without being sick, you know. And I'm very thankful to the Lord for the opportunities He has given me, He has presented in my way throughout my life. Um, just like a lot of people, I am in school, currently in school. Uh, I have been in the school system for all my life, you know. I've done, you know, the SE exam, the CXC. Uh, I went to university and obtained a bachelor's, and I am currently further in my studies beyond that now. Um, I know being in the stu- school system for, for, for that long, it is very difficult to find the motivation to continue to study, you know. And a lot of the times, you know, you may question, is it really worth it to do all of these studies? But at the end of the day, depending on your dream, this may be the only way to accomplish that. And anytime the work may seem like too much for me, I always call on God. I cry out to God, I, I pray, I pray that he sees me through and so far, every time he has seen me through. There are exams that I would not have been able to pass if God hadn't seen me through, you know, and give me the wisdom and the knowledge to pass those exams. And I know also, it could also be difficult, you know, finding any motivation now, especially in the COVID time where... A lot of people now are just doing the the work online. They're not really interacting with anybody. So nobody really giving anybody any kind of motivation to study. Especially if you may be going to school in a foreign institution like in England or in America. Where you may not necessarily have other classmates who would, you know, be able to, you know, motivate you and that kind of stuff. Also, it might be also hard if, let us say, you you had friends all the time, you all was going to school together, and maybe, let's say, you did, you went and you did a bachelor's. The person also did a bachelor's with you, but after that, that would, for them, currently, that may have been the end of the road, or they may be on a break, but you decide to continue and further on your studies. That may also be hard, but with with god anything is possible and anytime you face difficulty god is the best person to call on you know so that was my message and i hope some people get some level of motivation from it and thank you very much for listening good morning boys and girls it's a pleasure to be with you all this morning Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year to you. I trust God that we all will be drawn closer to Him this year. I must say thank you to all the children who participated in the tribute for Uncle Bing last week. 
Thank you so much for the love you projected. Let us pray. Aidan will now say our prayer. Let us now listen to the scripture reading. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Thank you for the prayer and the scripture reading. Our topic today is the sower. Yes, I said the sower. By now you are thinking of some kind of planting taking place as the scripture reading suggested. Jesus told his followers about this gardener who went out to plant some seeds. Some fell by the wayside as he was going and the fowls came and ate them up. Some fell on stony grounds and they got scorched by the sun and withered away. And some fell among thorns and was choked and dried up also. But you know what? Some fell on good soil and they brought forth fruits. Let us say it was corn. Some of the plants bear about a hundred and some sixty and some thirty. Do you think that was great? Yes, that was awesome. Jesus is really talking about the Word of God. Just think about there are some extra part of the process of being a Christian. However, this one point can have huge result in your life. It's the secret reason for most of the joy you see in other Christians and the success they experience. Every one of us can have it but not all of us choose it. I am talking about choosing to live for Jesus. Here's the reason Jesus told the story about a farmer who chooses onto four different kinds of soil. Three kinds were not good for growing, so the seeds did not strive. The fourth kind of soil was healthy enough for the seeds to grow. But not all the seed produce the same amount of fruits. Picture it this way. Some seeds grew 30 pieces of fruits. Others grew 60. Still others grew 100. As a question, you can influence the quantity and quality of your fruit. How much do you want to love Jesus and live for him? How much joy and success do you desire? All followers of Christ produce some fruit, a service or something of value that glorifies God. But the amount is up to each person. The more you live for Jesus, the more fruit your life will produce. The more fruit you produce for Jesus, the more joy and success you will experience. Who wouldn't want that? Living for Jesus means thinking more about him than about yourself. It means wanting other people to see Jesus in you. God created you to be the most fulfilled and joyful when you are full of him. Anything less is just okay. Why settle for okay when you can be great? I urge you, live for Jesus always. Who want to live for Jesus today? I do. I would like to live for Jesus.
Dear Jesus, we thank you for keeping us safe. We thank you for the lessons we learned today. And help all of us to live for you always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in. See you next week. Bye. Love you and be safe.